Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and he has traced this, but some of the outline is still there. And some of the blue needs, the bluish gray needs to kind of stay there. And this isn't a bad trace because it shows the tributaries. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and go to object and, well, it's already broken apart. Let's go to left click, left click. We don't even have to right click. Let's see if we can't grab this, go up to object and break the, maybe he contoured it, I don't know. But we're gonna go up to object, group and ungroup it. And then we'll be able to go up to object and break the curve apart. We need to get rid of those inner letters. Now some of these we're going to, have to do them, uh, some of these were connected, like that is connected. So go to object, break curve apart. R control K. See, these were kind of connected where this one's not, because you can see it's grabbing the whole thing, break curve apart. But what we're doing, we're getting rid of those inside. Uh, we do have to break that one apart to get rid of this letter. And I don't know if those are letters uh, or islands. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of them right now. Um, now these other tributaries you kind of need. So what I'm going to do is go up here and make sure there's no fill and I'm going to left click in red and I'm going to make them all the same thickness. I'm going to make see they're not all the same thickness. I'm going to make them all a hairline. And you can see I, I've still got some of the, the, um, uh, or the, we're going to have to go again and go to group and ungroup and then delete these. And when you ever see it do that, I don't know why I'm having to do this twice, but evidently they were still kind of there. And whenever you see it's connecting it, and then you see it pick a lot, you need to break the curve apart. I don't think you could probably do it all at one time. Object. See, this one evidently is good. Now this one we're gonna have to break. No, that one's actually good either too. There we go. Go up to object control K. And this would be a case, it, it'd be kind of neat to have a, and you see we have, we have double lines. That's what was causing the problem. But we're gonna eliminate that in just a second. We're not gonna have to worry about those double lines by what we're gonna do. So I got a couple more. And that's what the problem is. There's double, whenever he did it, he uh, inadvertently made double lines or it traced double lines. And I'm not gonna remove that double line because I'm gonna show you how to get rid of it. Now we need to zoom in on these tributaries and it's just the rivers between them. And I'm gonna take the smart field tool or the virtual segment delete key and I'm gonna delete. I'm actually gonna delete that. It's gonna be so small that it's not gonna be necessary. And what it is, it's just, we need to, I always call it like my, letting the water flow uh, between the two. Um, this is the kind of stuff I love to do. Um, it's kind of a little bit time consuming, but if you'll see in just a second, you just don't want any loose ends out there because we're gonna use the smart fill tool to fill this in. And this is one of those items you could actually use the um, I don't know why that would be there. Let's actually delete. Well, that's going to change when we use the smart fill tool anyway. The top is probably going to be a little harder. Um, I don't even know what that would be. Um, that's evidently not really what we want anyway. And then there's parts like this that unless you're really, really trying to get a lot of detail, he's actually gonna engrave this. And then we might as well fix this right here while we're here. If you take the shape tool, it just looks like a node that's been turned on itself. And that's because of the, the and we can select them all and just hit delete. That's because of the double lines. But as I say, in just a second, I'm gonna show you the double lines aren't gonna matter. Well, we actually got triple lines on that island. Here we go. 
and then just turn that note around. There we go. And then up top, the water's gonna flow through there. It's kind of funny I'm using the word water and I'm actually doing a, a lake. So we need to take the virtual segment delete key and I'm gonna try deleting this loop. It worked, that worked. I'm just trying to get the, the, the river and the lake and the streams between the lakes for the water to, to flow. You know, right up here, I don't really know. And this is this is a part you'd probably want to really look at the map and see what it looks like. And I think we need to delete that, delete that. We might be messing. I don't think we need. And then I want to show you. You could actually, well, you can't. You could actually take away nodes, but they're connected. So just keep using the virtual segment delete key. And I'm not even going to worry about that. Those little bitty tidbits. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave them. Now we've we've changed it up quite a bit and I'm going to tweak it just a little bit more because we did use double lines and um, you know, like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, nobody's ever going to drive, you know, use a boat from this map. I'm going to leave that for right now. Now I'm afraid we're going to have a leak. So I am going to use the rectangle tool to go around it. I'm gonna look at one more thing up top. See, that's just part, the smart fill tool is gonna to take that away, but I would actually delete all this. You know, this is, especially if he's gonna engrave this, he's gonna engrave a well, I would actually probably cut this out um, and trying to engrave to a depth, but that's another whole different project. So now we're gonna take our rectangle tool and I'm only doing this for safety and I'm gonna take my smart field tool and cross your fingers and it worked except for right here we have one of the rivers we didn't open up and you can see it. Open that up. You probably don't have to get all that little garbage. And now it should work. Hold your fingers crossed and voila. Now you see some of the parts we don't have, but it all depends on what you want it to look like. I think that looks pretty good. And then you can left, left click, right click, and you've actually got a cut line. Now, some of this is garbage, especially if you were gonna engrave this. Uh, this needs to be cleaned up. Um, I would take that out right there. Maybe even take this, take, just take some of this stuff out. Then this is where you would want to really look at the map. You know, I've looked at the Great Lakes in years, but you need to kind of clean this up. If you have X7 or above, use the smoothing tool, click on it and just see how just real quickly clean up some of those corners. You, we've actually killed, you don't want to create a, a break. But then, so this you could either cut out and back her up a piece of plywood as a back and, um, you know, have the epoxy pour into the well. I don't know why it keeps doing that. So I would take away all this inside garbage. Um, and there's some parts right there where the, the nodes are messed up. So just take your shape tool and you could just delete those nodes. Now, even with the shape tool, you can make corners a little smoother. And once you've got all that done, if you're still dead set on engraving it, you know, I could actually, whoop. That's where you need to use the um, shape tool just to get, or this, you know, the shape tool, to get rid of these nodes and make it a little smoother. I'm not saying change the shape of the lake. But once you get, and see if you engrave this, that part right there is just gonna go away. So if you got out all the interior parts, clean this up a little bit with the smoothing tool. I actually got the smoothing tool a little bit too big. You know, you don't wanna, as long as you go fast, and then you can go back and look at some of these turn parts I'm going way too deep into this. I don't like making my videos this long, 
but if you can see right here, get the shape tool, there's a line right there you do not need at all. There's a line you don't need at all. And there's a line you don't need at all. There's part of something. Just kind of go around the outside. And this is a good case to use the zoom in and then use your pan tool because your pan tool can let you move around. Like I don't, if I was going to cut this out or even engrave it, I would really go and look real close at this corner, maybe delete them, maybe move those. See, there's two nodes on top of each other. But then if you want to engrave it, and I'm a little bit curious, oh, there's one island we got. So if you're going to cut it out, you could use that. If you're not, I would take it out. <clears throat> this might need to be widened. Uh, if you're going to cut it out, but that would be very easily with the shape tool. Just take it and move that, move those nodes over a little bit. Maybe even delete a couple of nodes. I turn that one upside down and now you can see, now there's a little bit of a line there we don't need. So this is kind of a good exercise on double lines and everything. But if you're going to cut this out, you need a little bit of a, space for the wood to be stay together and then if you're going to back it up anyway um, you know with another board and then pour epoxy into the you know so what i'm trying to get at instead of engraving down to three eighths of an inch or a quarter eighth of an inch you know cut this out of eighth inch plywood glue it to another piece of plywood and then pour your epoxy inside there or actually what would be cool, and I do it on Lake Travis maps, is don't worry about the epoxy, just color your backer board black or blue, and then this would be your lake and draw in some roads or whatever else you want. But that looks pretty good. Anyway, I hope that was what he's wanting, and thank you for watching.